Welcome back to another video. You know, you guys, I love eggs. I eat eggs actually every morning for breakfast, but I don't eat these eggs because these eggs are too small. I eat bigger eggs than this. But today I want to show you guys how I feed my kukri snakes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this egg, put it in my little makeshift portion cup, bottle cap, and I'm going to put it in with the snake. And then I want to kind of break down for you guys kind of what we're doing like throughout the year because I'm getting a lot of new emails, new customers, new inquiries. People basically have no idea how we're running our program. And so at the end of the video, I'm going to take the camera back inside and see if our kukri snake ate the egg like he did earlier in the week. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So first, no shells. I like to just crack the egg and dump it in there just like that. And hopefully the kukri will slurp it all down. So let's go inside the snake room and put it in there. All right, and you guys saw this snake before. This is the Octolineatus, and I'm gonna try to do this as gentle as possible because I don't want the snake to get too alarmed. So take off the lid, put the egg in there like that. Close it up, gently put it away, go inside the house. I'm gonna talk at you guys for a minute. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna come back and check it. So as I said before, we're getting a lot of new people sending messages and inquiries about animals and all sorts of stuff. Now, we have 34,000 subscribers, which is pretty much nothing. But I also feel that we could have 34 million subscribers. And of course, we're still not reaching everybody. So sometimes I get the impression that because we've been doing a weekly video for I don't know how many, two years or so, that we reach everybody and our messages reach everybody, but clearly they don't. And so I wanted to make this video so when I do get people messaging me and asking me all these questions about reserving animals and purchasing animals and payment plans and all these other sorts of things that maybe I can just politely email everybody back with a video link and they can watch this video and they can get a better understanding kind of who we are and what we're doing. So I retired from my regular work in October of 2020 and the couple of years leading up to that, actually more than that, maybe three or four years leading up to my retirement, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. Um, I was heavily leaning towards just hanging it up, closing the doors, no more DM exotics, and that would be the end of it. And I just couldn't do it. And it was maybe more of a pride thing because we've been in business since 1997. In fact, I've been doing expos since 1996, every single year, pretty much every Southern California expo, DM Exotics has been a presence at all of those shows. And so I didn't wanna just disappear. I wanted to kind of continue our run. And so I was trying to figure out how I would be able to do that because Apple and I, we had already built our house in Thailand and we were planning on moving over there as soon as I retired. So I finally came up with the idea about two years before I retired that what if we moved our breeding collection or the majority of it to Malaysia and partnered up with my Malaysia partner and had our facility running in Kuala Lumpur. So during the pandemic, we took this on, took this project on. And as you all know, uh, the animal business continued on during the pandemic and live animal cargo continued to ship back and forth. Therefore, we had no issues exporting my collection to Malaysia. And so we, had our facility, my partner arranged the facility. Uh, we got all of our caging in place and everything else. And basically during the pandemic, we moved all of our animals overseas. And so a lot of people ask me why not Thailand? And so basically the short answer is that Thailand is just, the laws just don't work well with the animal business. But the benefit of being in Malaysia is because not only is there an established animal business for import export, also with the help of my partner, who is one of the biggest, if not the biggest in Malaysia, 
he could continue um, helping us run our business, but just doing it in Malaysia. So you're talking about like a two hour flight or something like that from Thailand to Malaysia. So it's not that big of a deal. And so that's basically what we have going on up to this point. So the other part of this is that instead of me chasing money and looking at this as like a business, which it is a business venture, of course, but I'm doing it for fun. I'm pushing myself to see if I can accomplish all of these things in other countries on an international level. So far, we're doing really well at it. And I just love reptiles. And so this is just fueling this fire. And it's like a raging inferno at this point because living in Southeast Asia, I can put my hands on all sorts of different animals. I can source all kinds of different stuff. I can source new stuff. For those of you that watch the channel, you guys are seeing that on a continual basis. We continue bringing new species to the hobby. We continue giving you guys like species awareness, new locality stuff, all kinds of things. And that is not gonna stop. And that is basically what keeps me moving forward in this this one particular project but it doesn't end there we actually have another expansion project going on in indonesia and i will review more about that in time i've already said this in a couple of previous videos it's just not the time yet to reveal it but it is going to offer me some big benefits and being able to put my hands on some really interesting stuff but anyway more on that later but <laughs> I'm really excited about it. I'm trying to contain myself. I don't want to say too much at this point. So how do we run things? This is the important part for a lot of the people that have no idea who we are or how we do things. So we don't live in the US. We are here in the US every summer from about June until September, maybe October, but the rest of the time we boogie out of here and we're overseas. We're either in Thailand at our house or we're traveling to neighboring countries. We may be in Malaysia at our facility. We may be in Indonesia. Um, I suspect we'll be in Indonesia quite a bit more since we have some new business ventures going on over there. But basically we're arranging our reptile stuff. And while we're gone, we're working on reptile things and i'm having a lot of fun doing it because i'm sourcing new things and it's and it's just an amazing experience and and i have no intention to stop but we are basically working our business overseas and so we're acquiring animals and we're breeding animals and we're doing a lot of that kind of stuff and then we arrange everything to ship to us as soon as we are stateside so we usually get back around the beginning of june or so and I have all of my shipments sending to me as soon as we're back. And then the animals are here. And then of course we rock on with our expos and we do our online sales and we do our local sales and all that kind of stuff. But we start our waiting list obviously ahead of time. So our Patreon members get first access to our list, to our animals. We do a monthly Zoom for those guys. Those guys get a really good insight as to what we have going on at any particular time. So I always start my Zoom meetings with an update, kind of update everybody what we're up to, what we're, you know, what we're doing basically. And then at some point I start launching lists and I allow the Patreon members to start uh, vying for position and reserving animals off of our waiting list. After I give them some advance notice, then I may go public with a list. This year we put our availability list on our website. So that seemed to work out pretty decent. So I'll probably be doing that also moving forward into the future. But the waiting lists start in advance. And some of our shipments we have to put in for permits like three months prior. So if we want a shipment to land in June, we may be putting in our for our export permits like in March. So it's not a lot of times things that can happen just spontaneously at the last minute or add things or whatever. So if you're one of those people that hits me up, like maybe we're in the US, but the shipment is coming in a week or whatever, like it's too late to add animals most of the time. So that is basically how it works. I'm really good at returning all the messages that I get. Anybody 
will tell you that I'm fast in getting back to the replies. When I'm here in the US, I'm obviously faster because I'm in the majority of your guys' time zone. But when I'm overseas, of course, I'm asleep when you're awake and vice versa. But regardless, I get back to everybody, I give you guys an honest answer, kind of tell you what I know or don't know or whatever. And so that's pretty much how it goes. Speaking about expos, um, some of you noticed in the last video, I'm wearing this, this knee brace. So I just went today to the orthopedic surgeon and I have surgery scheduled for August 10th. So yes, I'm having knee surgery. Some of you that were at the last expo saw me kind of limping around or we actually discussed with a number of people about my pending knee issues. And so I'm having surgery uh, the Thursday before the expo. So unfortunately, I had to send an email today to Rami, the show promoter, and politely decline my attendance at the Pomona Reptile Super Show. So we will still be shipping, we will still be selling, we will still be importing, we'll still be exporting, we'll still be doing these videos. Uh, nothing really stops me. And I mean, even from like, even if I was on a wheelchair or crutches, well, I will be on crutches. It's still not gonna stop us from going forward. I am not a good YouTuber. I am not a good social media personality or influencer, as they say. I could probably use this knee surgery as a reason to start a GoFundMe campaign, but my work ethic just won't allow me to do that. So limping around, whatever it may be, I will forge ahead. So I'm super excited to get back overseas. I have to fix my knee first so I can actually walk and hike and do all this stuff. And I have so many different directions that I can go with all of these new projects and I'm super, super excited about it. So I can't wait. I wanna get this thing fixed as fast as I can, get through the PT, get off the crutches, start walking again and whatever, and then we are headed back overseas. And again, getting back to the whole social media YouTuber thing, I wanna share this journey with you guys as I've been doing every week for a very, very long time now in a row. And so I'm not gonna lay on a bunch of social media BS and I'm not gonna do any kind of clickbait. I just wanna show you guys what I'm doing and kind of give you an idea of how I'm doing it. And then of course, why I'm doing it at the end. And you're gonna hopefully be seeing the, the fruits of my labor uh, as we go along. So I am going to be sharing this adventure with you guys, this journey, and continue to document animals in the wild. And we need to get overseas. I got a lot of things to manage. So not a ton of animals in this video. We are expecting some new animals next week, kind of a smaller shipment. This is gonna be our EU and UK animals. And then the week after we're anticipating uh, receiving a very nice shipment from Indonesia that should be the pythons and some special animals that I've been waiting on, things that I've been working on sourcing while I've been over there. And so I think those animals are finally coming the week after. So you got a couple of really good videos coming up, I hope, uh, animal related stuff I'll make up for this video. And that is about it, you guys. I'm gonna take you back outside. We're gonna take a look at the oligodon, the kukri, see if it ate the egg. But first, I just wanna thank you guys for watching our videos and take care of yourselves. We will see you in the next one. All right, you guys, let's take a look. It's been about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes since I stepped away to do that video. And we have an empty portion cup and a very, very fat kukri. <laughs> so you can see completely empty. They just slurp it all down. So this snake is available. It's on my available page. If you're interested, send me a message. This is a male. And um, quail eggs are very, very easy to source. Get them at the Asian market. I think even maybe like Sprouts or any of the regular supermarkets, even maybe Ralph's has it, um, but easy to find. And keep the quail eggs in your refrigerator. Pull one out every week, put it in a cup. That's it. And clean the mess afterwards. Uh, they, they do defecate something a little interesting because it's just eating raw egg, but it doesn't matter. If you keep it on substrate, um, we're just doing something right now with paper towels. I don't like the, the cocoa fiber, the cocoa husk that we got at the expo. It's, it's 
molding out in a very short period of time. I feel like it wasn't heat treated. Somebody, somebody, one of the brands, I'm not gonna put them on blast, but I think they cheaped out and bought the stuff that wasn't heat treated. And so now we're in the process of replacing anything. We're going back to Cypress mulch, this um, coconut stuff, we're just wasting money. So the Cypress mulch lasts a long time. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.